the belief in heliocentrism or that our earth rotates and orbits around the sun is so thoroughly ingrained in the mind that to question it seems akin to questioning the very ground beneath our feet. The mind recoils at the thought. Either heliocentrism is an extremely self-evident truth or we have been extremely indoctrinated to believe it is. Before we even learn to speak words, we are bombarded with the imagery of tilted, spinning earths and the solar system. I bet nobody watching this can say they remember a time when they didn't already accept heliocentrism as a self-evident truth. It seems to be the measure of an education, the thing which must be accepted, that the earth rotates and orbits around the sun. We are then invited into a never-ending stream of TV fantasy worlds where spaceships glide through alien infested universes, warp driving through the same stars that rotate around us every night. Surely, heliocentrism advanced by Copernicus in the 16th century, must be a proven fact by now. Surely the model of our solar system is based on empirical, ver verifiable, incontrovertible facts that nobody can deny. I was then surprised to discover that the fundamental tenets of heliocentrism have always been based on assumptions. Nobody ever discovered the earth was tilted. Nobody ever discovered that the earth rotated. It had to be assumed for the Copernican heliocentric model to work. Just like heliocentrism had to be assumed to begin with. In order to escape the philosophical horror of being located at the center of the universe. I always just assumed heliocentrism had been verified by observations of the planets and their various geometric relationships to one another. I was surprised to discover that the exact opposite was true. We know that the difference between a heliocentric theory and a geocentric theory is one of relative motion only and that such a difference has no physical significance. Today we cannot say that the Copernican theory is right and the Ptolemaic theory is wrong in any meaningful sense. The two theories are physically equivalent to one another. Again, once more for the record, it has been shown at least six different ways this century alone that the equations and physics used by NASA to launch satellites are identical to the equations derived from a geocentric universe. Thus, if the space program is proof of anything, it proves geocentricity and disproves heliocentrism. I can construct you a spherically symmetrical universe with Earth at its center, and you cannot disprove it based on observations. You can only exclude it on philosophical grounds. In my view, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. What I want to bring into the open is the fact that we are using philosophical criteria in choosing our models. A lot of cosmology tries to hide that. This is the heliocentric model of our universe. This is burned into our minds. This is what it looks like from a geocentric perspective. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. Ecclesiastes 1.5 Heliocentric
geocentric. The earth does not move. also established that it cannot be moved. Psalm 93.1 These are the patterns created by a geocentric model. Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. 1 Chronicles 16.30 Why are we so ready to accept that which we cannot see and that which seems so counterintuitive to our observation? Why shouldn't we be the center of the universe? Because our academic priesthood tells us we had to have originated from a Big Bang 15 billion years ago. That is what all of this deception boils down to removing from the minds of men the idea that the earth is the center and that the heavens revolve around us exactly as it has always appeared to do for all of our lives. They tell us what we see is wrong because they have assumed otherwise and in so doing they steal our reality away from us and replace it with a fantasy world of mysticism where the laws, the matter, and the energy of the universe explode out of nothing, where living biochemical machines spontaneously generate out of dirt and water, and fish morph into humans, given enough millions of years of cult genetic accidents. We are living in one of the most superstitious ages in human history when such mysticism is held up as beacons of scientific discovery.